Hey folks, this is Waylon. Just going live on Instagram as well. So I hope you're all well. I'm out in Western Massachusetts working with really bad Wi-Fi, which is intentional because I'm here at Kripalu. Kripalu is a uh, famous yoga center and they discourage use of electronics on many of the floors, many of the hours. There's a silent breakfast. There's no um, use of uh, phones in half the building. And uh, who does that feel, any of you, does that sound attractive? Does that sound really great? To me, it does. Uh, it's been really, really nice to have a sort of enforced break from being online. Um, that said, it's not black and white. You can use your phone or your laptop or whatever in the, they have a office, they have a, in my room right here, this is my room, it's pretty hip, it's pretty cool, it's uh, geothermal, it's super eco. Um, let me see if I can show you the view, it's just stunning. You can see I'm uh, drying my laundry out here, but here's the view. Let's see if I can do both. This is heavy lifting. So that's the, what do you call it, Stockbridge Bowl out there. This is the view out of my room. I mean, not half bad. All right, hope you could all see that. I'm filming it on my phone and my laptop right now. Um, so I just wanted to go over a couple lessons learned uh, for me and lessons reminded for me and, and possibly for you that you might find inspiring. So what, if you're not here in Kripalu right now, unless you are, um, and there are a number of elephant readers I've run into here, which is cool. Um, but since you're not here, what is the most valuable that I've got on this trip? Well, I'm here for a yoga, mindfulness, and art trip. So I'm doing yoga, I'm doing art, we're practicing mindfulness, we're practicing art, we're going for walks and runs in the forest. There's lots of forest bathing here. There's bathing, bathing in the, um, they have a sauna, they have whirlpool stuff. No whirlpool for the men because they put an elevator where the hot tub used to be. But there's a whole, that huge lake I just showed you. You can swim in there. So if you have any comments or questions at any point, let me know and I will respond to you. No matter how mean you are uh, or how nice, I will respond. And then um, also, as Melissa is doing and a couple others say, if you're saying hi, just say where you're from. Where in the world are you from? So uh, I've been here for almost a week. I'm going to leave in a day or two, going to the Albany airport. And um, here's the most valuable lesson. So Kripalu, not being able to use Wi-Fi in like half the areas has been really valuable. I think it's far more valuable than not being able to use Wi-Fi anywhere and taking a total break because we're a binge society. We binge and purge, right? We, we, um, we might go to Burning Man or something where we can't be on Wi-Fi at all, although now they have Wi-Fi more than ever. Um, you know, we might take a break occasionally, and then we are, while talking to friends, we're back online. So learning how to work with things mindfully. So we're using social media instead of being used by it. We're using Instagram or Facebook instead of being used by it. Uh, remember Instagram, Facebook, these are Zuckerberg for profit. We want to use them to benefit your career and your life, not just be used by them. Um, so Kripalu, one of the most profound things, ironically, uh, is pretty basic, which is the food. The food here is immensely varied. There's a lot of consistent stuff like the Buddha bar. The Buddha bar um, is kind of traditional uh, Indian food. It's very simple. It's vegan. Um, incredible flavors, tons of spices. It's actually not totally vegan. There's ghee, um, which is clarified butter. Who knows what clarified means, but I know many of you do. And then there's a sandwich bar, then there's panini thing, but then there's a main area. And so there's all kinds of different meals, but every single meal here is super healthy, like the healthiest meal you've eaten in weeks. If you're an average human, I'm pretty average uh, when it comes to food uh, health. And then, uh, but it's super flavorful. So it's so yummy and it's so flavorful. And yeah, I'm vegan, but they have some non-vegan food. Um, and but all of it's just super healthy and super super flavorful, flavorful, um, and like you can eat limitless amounts. So 
I have been enjoying myself. Uh, the more you eat here, the more you just have to go for runs in the forest. And there's this thing that's all hipster friendly now called forest bathing, but it really is awesome because you get in the forest here and other than the uh, Lyme disease, the tick danger, um, you're just in heaven. It's you're just being bathed in the forest. It's really relaxing. I used to live in Vermont and I, man, I miss it. Uh, there's something de, I hate to use all these words, these hipster hippie words, but it's detoxifying. Like you feel like all that time on Instagram, on Facebook, you go into a forest without any of that, leave your phone behind. Who needs it? I don't need to work for Zuckerberg and share everything on Instagram. And it's just so beautiful. It's um, just so relaxing to be in nature where nature is strong and hasn't been totally messed up by man. Um, so then the other uh, lesson is sort of a sad one here at Kripalu. So Kripalu is a former Jesuit monastery. It's pretty big and uh, one of the Jesuits called it a sort of spectacularly mediocre building. Kripalu has really improved it and made it more beautiful, but the building itself, not the building I'm in, which is stunning and new and eco and stylish, but this building where most of Kripalu is, is, is situated overlooking this incredible beauty. So the situation is beautiful, but it's right where the second biggest house in the U.S. used to be called Shadowbrook. And if Shadowbrook sounds romantic, oh my God. So I, I encourage all of you to Google Shadowbrook images and look at this house. It was more like a hotel. It had a hundred rooms. It was craftsmanship was just stunning. So I don't care about old age and inequality and all that stuff that's not a virtue particularly but the craftsmanship of these old houses is just stunning and uh, they were going to tear it down and build this mediocre building here so there's just one of my great loves in my life is historic preservation I don't care if you're in Cleveland like free spirited or uh, Cleveland like Woolmon 6 you two have to hang out um, Lowell Mass anyone Germany Ontario, Canada, Southern Cal, I'm looking at Instagram right now, uh, USA, New York City, Germany, Puerto Rico, uh, sorry, white boy here, Slovenia, Greece, Halifax, I don't care where in the world you are, but that historic preservation is a real virtue. It's not preserving anything, it's preserving almost anything that's worthwhile. Um, so in that vein, I went to Stockbridge, Massachusetts, which was where Norman Rockwell and his wife used to live. And then his wife died, and then he remarried. Uh, he was encouraged by his sons to get out. He was 67, get out of the house. So he went and took a portrait class, and he fell in love with the old lady teacher, and they married a very cute couple two years later. So he lived in Stockbridge, and he worked in this with his uh, the prior wife. He worked in this studio, and I got to go see the, the uh, huge window. It's oversized because he expanded the window. Uh, so he could get a lot of that northern light, which artists love because there's no intense shadows, I guess. And um, anyway, he painted, if you Google new, uh, Norman Rockwell Stockbridge, you'll see this kind of uh, classic New England town. It's got the turrets and the Queen Anne and the fire station and the bank. And it's like a toy town. Um, but it's really beautiful. And they preserved it, which is so rare. And uh, it's such a beautiful thing. So get involved in historic preservation wherever you lead, please. And that doesn't mean that modern buildings, whatever, aren't wonderful, but a lot of the materials that are going into modern building are pretty toxic, like in drywall, in um, uh, particle board, in cabinets, um, in MDF. There's a lot of nasty stuff, your couch, your mattress, everything is kind of has formaldehyde or poisons or toxic stuff in it, um, unless you know otherwise. So if you know otherwise, good on you. And things are changing thanks to good old California, they're getting kind of uptight on that stuff. So this is all over the place. Normal, normally my messages will be about one thing, but I, I uh, this is about my trip. So, and what maybe is interesting to you. So finally, um, you know, in a sad way, Stockbridge is still this gorgeous town and there's gift shops everywhere. There's tourists running around. Tanglewood is right next door, famous musical venue uh, outdoors. And but if you go into these shops, it's very kitschy. Everything smells like that, those, those gross gift candles and almost everything's made in China or India or whatever. So, you know, it's not the town it used to be. It's just kind of 
uh, pretending. And, you know, it's really a reminder to support. I bought these, um, I reused my bag. I brought my bag from the museum. And I, the only thing I bought were these. These are 100% cotton, no plastic. Remember, polyester is plastic. We're trying to do away with plastic. So these are 100% cotton, made in Vermont. Still not local, but at least New England. And I used to live in Vermont, so I have a bit of an attachment. And they'll go as placemats in my house. So tr try wherever you go to support the local. When you go to Hawaii, don't support, um, you know, made in China or whatever. Try to support the locals. When you go to France, try to do the same. Wherever you go, try to, in, you know, to quote Bakuru Banzai, uh, be there. Wherever you go, there you are. So, so shop where you are. Um, I'll see if there's some comments and questions, and then we'll wrap up. All right. Have I missed anything? I met, might have missed stuff. South Beach, I was just there last year or something. Yeah, it's just stunning here. I'm responding to random comments. Uh, psychedelics. I'm actually in this uh, MDA uh, documentary in one of the early scenes, but I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't really have any thoughts worth sharing on that. I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to it. But if you search on elephantjournal.com, you'll see lots of articles about that. Um, do you use your thoughts you don't want as triggers, but it ends up? Uh, I don't get all that, but Trunk Prumche's response to almost any complex question, and yours is definitely complex, is this is on Instagram, is meditate, meditate more, sit more, sit more, please, he would say in his high-pitched English accent. So just take a good posture. You can do it with me right now if you're so inspired, all of you. It's always a worthwhile thing to learn how to meditate. So you're going to, this is a practice called shamatha with your eyes open and you're try, training yourself to ground in the present moment. And maybe give it a like or love if you're interested in doing this. If not, I can reverse out of the mud. So take a good posture and relax. Not an uptight, rigid posture. Find your breath in and out. Give it a heart or whatever if you like, if you want to do this. Breathe in and out. Of course, all of you are breathing in and out, but place your attention on your breath in and out. Everyone do this, no matter what you're doing. So place your attention like a little surfer on the wave of your breath in and out. And before long, you'll find yourself thinking. Just notice your thinking, and that's a moment of awareness. And bring your attention back. So say, ah, I'm thinking gently, no guilt, no, no problem. Just bring your attention back to your breath. So this isn't a profound spiritual practice. This is simply meditation. You're just practicing training your mind to come back. All right, I hope you get the idea and then dedicate yourself to the benefit of all. So finally, I'll scan through some comments on the main uh, Facebook page here. Yeah, you just put in the meditation link. So that's on Elephant uh, Facebook. The retreat has been a week total. Um, yeah, Eastern Upstate New York, it's just gorgeous here. Rainforest bathing in Alaska, that sounds amazing. I would love to come Brittany. All right, Kripalu is in uh, Western Mass. I took a train out here from New York. Had a really fun day in New York. Stayed at a historic hotel called the Jane, which was only like 100 bucks for the night and includes a bike. All right, I think I've addressed all the questions, but there are not many, but that's always fine. Uh, yeah, I would recommend Kripalu for the food alone. They have many different programs. Find something you're interested in. It's a fantastic place to R&R uh, &R to rest and recharge. Um, if you're looking for a party, this is not the place. But if you're looking to really, you know, go swimming, enjoy the winter, depends on the season you're here, right? Uh, spa, massage, yoga, acupuncture, sleep a lot. It's fantastic for all that. Sounds good to me, right? All that stuff. All right, um, anyone else? Oh, Ananda, thank you. Yeah, I enjoy meditating with you too. Even though I was rushed, 
Yeah, so I'm doing tons of photos on at Whale and Lewis on stories mainly. And Kayanet, yeah, I'll be happy to do a live video every day. We have Andrea, I think she's on as an editor on duty, not on Instagram, but on Facebook. And uh, thanks to her, I think we'll be doing a lot more. And we're looking at doing an elephant retreat, an elephant gathering. So Leslie, uh, others, you could join us here. All right, big love to all of you, including Jane Hanley. Thank you. We'll do another soon. Goodbye from Western Mass. And if you want to click the notifications on Facebook, you'll get more of these videos. Uh, like or love it if you enjoyed it as well. And that always helps the algorithm get beyond the choir to those who might enjoy this and give a care.